Welcome to another Seek Out the Adventure video where you will be inspired to live an unusual and exciting life. I'm back at you with another Crag Pack review. Got another 45 liter clamshell style backpack. Um, on this channel, I've uh, already published a video that talks about three primary types of climbing bags and uh, also explains how I'm kind of obsessed with the clamshell style packs right now. And so I'm gonna be reviewing as many as I can get my hands on. And today we're going to be talking about the Edelrid Rope Rider. I've been super excited to review this backpack because I feel like there is practically nothing online about this bag. Edelrid themselves on their website, they have one photo and like 60 words about this backpack. And then because of that, all of the dealers have barely any info on it. There's, from what I could tell, no videos online. There was one that was in German that was kind of comparing this pack with two other climbing packs. So uh, very excited to help you all understand what this pack is about, because right now you just can't get it online. So let's start off with understanding how Edelrid is uh, positioning this pack. They positioned the Rope Rider as a stylish, large capacity pack with plenty of space for all of your climbing gear. That's pretty much the, the opening description and only description of it. And then on their website, they list the following information about this pack. It has an outer zip pocket for tape, keys, money, etc. Check. They say that it has numerous inner pockets for cell phone, topos, guidebook, etc. Uh, in a bit, I'll show you the inside of the pack, but I don't know what they're talking about in regards to numerous inner pockets. I believe I have a full production model here. This isn't a sample or pre-production, but I could be mistaken there. So I'm trying to fact check that. Uh, and then it says, due to its rigid construction, it retains its shape when standing open. Um, that is pretty much true. It, it has a bit of structure, mainly in the back panel and on the bottom, and a teeny bit just right up here. Everything else is pretty non-structured, but it does stand up pretty well. Um, and then the carry system with adjustable shoulder straps and detachable waist belt, check. Side compression straps for volume adjustments, check. And it comes with a rope tarp, check. So aside from the mere one image and 60 words about this pack that they have on their website, uh, let's dive a little deeper into this pack. This whole pack is built around the back panel. It is a pretty structured back panel. It's flexible though, and it is it padded in the shoulder blades in the lumbar area. And then when you move on to the shoulder straps, you have just pretty standard shoulder straps. They are adjustable and they do have a, an adjustable sternum strap in terms of its height and also its length. It does have one carry handle, typical place there in the top. And then the nice thing about this is you can tell that it stands up straight pretty nicely and that's mainly because they did put a bit of structure, mainly just a, a pad here in the bottom. It keeps a nice flat base and it does really well at just standing up. And then hitting on the compression straps again, there are four total compression straps on the sides. Um, yes, you could use it to, I guess, cinch down the pack itself, but I really like outside compression straps mainly so that I can put jackets or drape a rope and secure the rope on through the straps. So a lot of um, attachment opportunities there. It also has two rows of daisy chains, giving you other customized uh, attachment options, especially for maybe attaching your helmet on the outside of your pack. Um, diving a little deeper into this pocket that it was mentioned on the website, this pocket is very spacious. A whole guidebook, um, but pretty content with the size of that one. It does have a key, and that's it for the outside. Let's go inside now. So if you tip it on its front, this clamshell backpack opens up this direction. Sometimes other ones will open up this direction. Right now I have in here the equivalent of what you would want for a typical day of fort climbing, minus any sort of jackets or clothing or drinks or food. But if I needed to squeeze that stuff in here, there is pretty a decent amount of space there, especially if I was to strap my helmet on the outside of the pack, I have a lot of room for those other uh, personal items there. But otherwise I'm fitting right now a helmet, 
a harness, a belay system, rack of quick draws, a 70 meter rope, as well as the included tarp. So let's start off internally with the main compartment. This main compartment um, is pretty basic. Not much in there. It's just one giant compartment, but you will see these two carry handles. I do enjoy these because when you want to quickly just toss your gear in and move from one route to another route that's on maybe the other end of the crag, you can just quickly throw that stuff in, toss it, flip this over, and then quickly grab the handles and kind of just kind of haul it over there without having to zip up and throw it on your shoulders and everything. So those handles do come handy. Um, as the website stated, it has some structure to it, so it does kind of stay up and create that trough. Right now it's a little top heavy here because of the guidebook. And so that's what's pulling it, pulling it down a bit, but it does stay up pretty much. It does have a bit of structure from this kind of plastic or rubber stuff that runs along here. Then you got the pad there. So it does pretty well at keeping itself up. So you kind of get a sense of what its uh, full capacity is from there. And then other than that, the only other feature for the inside of the pack, besides the main compartment and the two carry handles, is this little sleeve pocket here. You can put random flat things there. Um, it's a dedicated place that the, the tarp comes in. Uh, which is kind of nice because these tarps do get dirty and so it's nice to be able to fold it up and put it in a sleeve where it's not really going to be rubbing the dirt on other stuff. Otherwise, let's see how a guidebook handles in there. You can even fit a standard size guidebook in there as well. The inside of the pack is, is pretty, uh, pretty minimalistic. A lot of the features that we listed off are already are primarily on the outside. So in terms of the stats for this pack, this pack takes first place for being the most economical or affordable pack. And that's because it runs for $100. It takes first place. The, the pack of its kind of similar style clamshell and 45 liters uh, that takes second place, it's $120. But beyond that, all the other clam style packs that are available in the US, they easily range from 140 to $275. So for a $100 crag pack, this is a, a pretty good bargain. And then this pack also takes second place for being the lightest crag pack that is clamshell style in, in the 45 liter range. Um, this weighs two and a half pounds. It takes second place to the Blue Ice Octopus, which is just two pounds. Besides this pack and the Blue Ice Octopus, all the other crag packs, clamshell style, 45 liters available in the US, those are easily in the three to four and a half pound range. So it's very lightweight, very affordable, and very minimalistic in the sense of just its features and, and how it functions. Now, with the gear back in this pack, um, let's talk about my personal opinions on it. Um, I do enjoy that it's, it's uh, able to stand up on its own. You got to kind of get a sense of how, it can, how, it's how much it's going to contain. It doesn't just droop down. Um, however, it is a little deceiving because mainly this, this top part that's angled, at times you feel like you're, you're loading it all the way up and there's no room, but once you zip it up, you get all the gear laid in there, you zip it up and then stand it up, everything tends to fall and at that moment you realize that you all of a sudden have, see if I can... All of a sudden you have, you find that extra space. And so typically you got to kind of put all the gear in, zip it up, stand it up, and then let things settle. And then you can start shoving in your jackets, your water bottle and stuff like that. Um, I do enjoy the slightly structured back panel. It does help uh, with just dispersing the load um, around between your back and your hips. If you're wearing the hip belt, um, it does kind of keep some of the, the hard uh, items in your backpack from jabbing you in the back. So I do appreciate that. Again, you're not going to want to do too heavy a loads. Um, that's usually when you'll want like a real back panel, maybe uh, aluminum strips or something. But in terms of like 
a one mile approach tops, this backpack will definitely treat you well. Other than that, it's it's pretty cushy in terms of like the, the minimal amount of padding that it has. Um, it's comfortable, it's classy looking, just like they are positioning it. Uh, to quote them, it is a stylish large capacity crack pack. Um, I do like that it has exterior mounting options. I'm a big fan of mounting my helmet or my rope on the outside if I'm carrying a lot more stuff like camera equipment or I'm gonna be out all day and it's a little chilly because then I need food and jacket and whatnot. So it's, um, it's nice to have those exterior mounting options. Um, other than that, like there's not much more to, to say about it because it is kind of on the, the lower end in terms of price. And I think a lot of these other crag packs that are easily in the uh, $200 range, they cost that because they have a lot more features built into it. There's a lot more strapping options, organizational options, and even just the way they, they make the back panel or the adjustability of shoulder straps. You might be able to adjust them up here to kind of help with kind of holding the top of the pack closer to your shoulders. And that's kind of why you start paying more for some of these more um, intensively built crag packs. So this does fall in the range of more of the minimalistic and because of that, you're gonna have a lot less weight, a lot less cost. It's a, it's a really good win for a, a basic but functional crag pack. If you have any questions about this crag pack, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, other than that, stay tuned for more crag pack review videos.